I'm Paul Larson, shining the spotlight on people whose stories will illuminate you. Should a country send its own citizens to prison if they haven't committed a crime? That's a question posed by Montreal playwright Vittorio Rossi. During the Second World War, when Canada declared war on Italy, hundreds of Canadian citizens of Italian descent, whom the government had labeled as dangerous, were sent to a prisoner of war camp in Ontario. Now we'll shine the spotlight on Vittorio Rossi, here to tell us about his play, Paradise by the River. What year did you write Paradise by the River? I wrote the play in 1997 and was first produced in 1998. And what happens in this play? Essentially what happens is uh, the main character named Romano Dicenzo, who is a, uh, um, the head of uh, his own construction company and growing immensely, is at odds with his brother-in-law in terms of how to run the company. His brother arrives soon after the play begins uh, to help him run the company and within a month Mussolini declares war on England and France, therefore Canada and the government arrests, puts out the uh, War Measures Act or, uh, labeling Italians uh, enemy aliens. Romano is uh, accused falsely of being a fascist. He's imprisoned and sent to a war camp in Petawawa, Ontario, whereupon he finds uh, struggles for justice to be released while his wife is left at home in the care of the, his brother, uh, struggling for the same reasons. So this was the Canadian government that targeted certain Italian Canadians? The, it targeted the entire population of Italian Canadians. Uh, at the time, 1940, I believe there were maybe um, 180, maybe 200,000 Italian uh, Canadians. Uh, more than half of them w had to be registered officially given the, uh, the, uh, the label of enemy aliens. Of that group, over 600 men were put in a camp in Petawawa, Ontario, those that the government deemed to be dangerous to the state. So this was a prison camp? Absolutely, yeah. It's, uh, Petawawa is now a, a, um, a military base for training, but at the time they used it as a, as a, as a POW camp. Yeah. So how long were people imprisoned? Some of the men in Camp Petawawa were imprisoned for uh, two years. Half of the men were later transferred to Camp Gagetown and were there for a further three years. And these were people who had not broken any laws? For the most part, no. Uh, n there was, there's no documentation about any of these men uh, breaking any laws. There were some bad elements in the camps, like there were some gangsters in the camp. Uh, 99% of the men were innocent workers of various uh, jobs. You had doctors, shoemakers, construction men, laborers, union leaders, teachers, musicians. Um, they, they were arrested on mere suspicion. And they all just happened to be Italian. Exactly. Yeah. So your play depicts life inside the camps? Actually, the play itself depicts two worlds, uh, life in the camp and life uh, back at home in Montreal, where you see the wife and the brother and friends and neighbors struggle uh, during that time. And what was life like in the camps? At the end of the day, after I did all the research, uh, life in the camp wasn't that bad. They, they dealt with loneliness and fear. The Italians uh, nicknamed the camp the city without women, which is to say, it had everything. It had, you know, they were three square meals a day. They were, they had food. They had, uh, you know, a place to sleep. They just didn't have their women, their wives, their 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 friends. You know, uh, it was actually more dangerous in the city because they did not have the disciplined uh, guards uh, of the military. They they were at the mercy of of the public who who had developed a hatred for the Italians based on what the government was telling them. What issue would you say is at the heart of this play? In its very essence, it, 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 it really asks the question, does the government have the right to arrest, arraign, and contain um, citizens 
whose motherland uh, is at war with you, um, the answer to that, I think, is clear. Uh, no one should ever have that power to contain a whole group of people based on their motherland's uh, ideas or actions. Do you know anyone who lived through the experience that you depict in your play in the prison camp? I met one man. Uh, he's now since passed away. His name was Antonio Capobianco. He did see the play. I, uh, I presented him to, uh, to the audience and they gave him a big round uh, standing ovation that night. This was 12 years ago. I remember clearly the night he saw it, he came up to me and said, he said, you got everything right. Not only the, 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 the camp part of the play, but the part of the play that deals with uh, the city, uh, those who were not arrested, he said, you got it all right. And I couldn't have gotten a better critique than that. So you did a lot of research for this. I did quite a bit, yeah. Uh, there's one major journal uh, that was published from by one, uh, uh, by one of the prisoners, um, and th it's called the City Without Women, and it's in three languages. There's uh, there's a the, a French version, an Italian version, and of course the English version. Yeah. How did you come to write this play? I was approached uh, years before I wrote it by a uh, a movie producer in Montreal uh, to write a two part miniseries, and the project never went forward. But I had done all this research, and I thought to myself, well, if I can't get it filmed, I can certainly put it on stage, and that's what I did. You, know? you are currently playing a role that you yourself wrote on the stage at the Centaur Theater. What is that like to play something that you wrote? It's uh, it, it's been a, an incredible experience. Uh, I had a conversation with one of the actors. Uh, I asked him clear out in rehearsal. Said, well, "Have you ever been challenged emotionally uh, as an actor?" And he said, "Never. Not until this play." And it's not because I wrote it, but it, it's just very demanding. Uh, I don't. I've never been challenged um, this much as a performer until I've done this play. What's the most poignant line that you say in the play? Probably the last line of the play, which is, let's get back to work, which is positive and hopeful, and it, it's very telling of these people. Uh, there's a saying in Italian, you know, si tira avanti, we, we move ahead in spite of what's happened in the past. And I think the last line of the play uh, shows the courage and the, 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 the optimism that a lot of these immigrants uh, had back then that in spite of the difficulties, in spite of what happened to them, let's move forward. As the person who wrote the play, what is it like for you to experience the play in front of a live audience? The experience is sometimes just indescribable. Last Sunday night, our last performance, uh, there a moment happened on stage, which is in the play I wrote uh, the, 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 this goodbye scene between my character, the prisoner, and this sergeant. This sergeant is a, a military man, a career military man, who throughout the play grows to uh, feel, feel sorry for, for these innocent men. So now they're saying goodbye, and I took a shot at, you know, as I have uh, the right to as an artist, as a playwright, uh, that one way of of saying goodbye is to have the sergeant salute the civilian, which is unlikely to ever to really happen. But I thought, what a high degree of respect that would be. I also have him say these lines, the sergeant, Dio ti benedica, which in Italian means God bless you. Well, on Sunday night, when the actor uttered those lines and saluted uh, the civilian, an applause broke out into the uh, from the audience, and it was so touching and so moving, uh, and so enriching. It it makes everything I did in this play, writing, acting, it was all worth it. It was a really, really beautiful moment. Paradise by the River runs until October 31st at the Centaur Theater in Montreal. Go to mountainlake.org for more information, and for more illuminating stories, watch the Spotlight segment on Mountain Lake Journal Extra. That's Thursday nights at 8.30 on Mountain Lake PBS.